Dear friends, welcome to ePartshala. I am Dr. Vishal Jadav, Department of Sociology, Tilak Maharashtra Vidya Peet, Pune. Today we are going to study a module called Knowledge as Power and Biopower, which is part of the Political Sociology paper. Until now, we have tried to understand what power is. We have tried to understand this through the Marxist and through the Weberian perspectives. Michel Foucault provides us an insight into what power is through the understanding of episteme and discourse. He tries to bring in the concepts of biopolitics wherein he, wherein he states that power is not inherent in any particular site, but power is to be found everywhere, both in the oppressor as well as in the oppressed. Relations of power. The exercise of power is not simply a relationship between partners, rather it is a way in which some acts on others. Power exists only as exercised by some on others, but this happens within earlier agreed upon structures that demarcate who can do what. In the Indian context, caste is one among such structures. A person's caste position often defines economic status, which impacts every other aspect of life. In a corporate setup where caste does not matter, the emphasis is placed on spoken English. Even here, although relations of power don't bring caste directly into play, many lower caste students lose out since they can't speak fluent English. Different structures come into play in different situations, thus allowing for some to exercise power over others. These relations of power are not violent, rather they function by obtaining a consent. But sometimes violence becomes necessary to ensure consent. Imagine police lati charge on a violent mob. The violence on the part of the police is necessary, otherwise there is a possibility of the mob going on rampage of looting, killing, burning. The police as protectors of citizens and custodians of law and order, lati charges the mob to disperse it, thus saving the rest of us from inconvenience, if not outright danger. Barring this rare display of violence, power works via a consent. In our everyday lives, we are trained to operate according to relations of power. When on road we abide by traffic rules, in case we jump a signal or violate a one way or ride without a helmet, we keep an eye out for the traffic cops. We function by accepting by default the rules put in place. Most of the times these aren't written rules, they are norms that express the relations of power in any scenario. For instance, our views on sexuality or respect for elders, in every scenario some exercise of power on others within earlier agreed upon structures and in every scenario the structures that come into play are different. Power knowledge. For a very long time kings, sovereigns had the right to decide life and death. As the sovereign he could legitimately wage war against the neighboring state, external enemy and require his subjects to fight the enemy which would lead to deaths of many. In this sense he wielded indirect power over the life and death of his subjects. At the same time, he could exercise direct power in ordering the death of someone who broke a law or rose in revolt against him. The right of the sovereign, in other words, was formulated as power of life and death. He could take life or let live. Wars today are no longer waged in the name of a king or sovereign who must be defended. Instead, they are waged for the security and well-being of the entire population. Wars today in the age of global terrorism are waged in the name of peace. It is as managers of life and survival of bodies and the race that so many regimes have been able to wage so many wars, says Foucault. The concern for the population in our country and the neighborhood has become so intense that governments have acquired nuclear warheads. But these nuclear bombs are spoken about as deterrents, a presence in the arsenal that will prevent the enemy from launching a similar attack. Today, we must have the capability of finishing off any threat in order to go on living safely. 
This principle of battle that one has to be capable of killing in order to go on living was also present in battles involving kings. The difference lies in what must go on living as opposed to the sovereign. Now the entire biological population must go on living. Foucault says the ancient right invested in a sovereign power to take life or let live was replaced by a power to foster life or disallow it to the point of death. Now, it is over life throughout its unfolding that power establishes its dominion. Death is power's limit. The moment that escapes it, death becomes the most secret aspect of existence, the most private. This form of power whose vocation is to foster life or disallow it to the point of death works by intervening meticulously in the lives of individuals through social processes. It takes care of individuals so as to take care of the population and by extension the territory. Without the individual, there would be no population and without population any territory would be useless. The task of this form of power is to administer life, not take life or let live. Foucault says in concrete terms, this power over life evolved in two basic forms starting in the 17th century. The first centered on the body as a machine, anatomy power. It was regulated by a variety of procedures such as power or disciplines and antomo politics of the human body. The second formed a little later and focused on the species, body or the population. The supervision of species, body was done through a series of interventions and regulatory controls, a biopolitics of the population. During the classical periods, there was a rapid development of various disciplines. Universities, secondary schools, barracks, workshops, there was also the emergence in the field of political practices and economic observation of the problems of birth rate, longevity, public health, housing and migration. Hence, there was an explosion of numerous and diverse techniques for achieving the subjugation of bodies and the control of populations marking the beginning of an era of biopower. In the 18th century, disciplining of the body was embodied in institutions like the army, schools, education. As for population control, demography, the evaluation of the relationship between inhabitants and resources gained prominence. Thus, in the development of knowledge itself, Foucault brings in an element of power. He said in 1975, after been trying to make visible the constant articulation I think there is of power on knowledge and of knowledge on power. The exercise of power perpetually creates knowledge and conversely knowledge constantly induces effects of power. This challenges the general view on the evolution of disciplines. We are all led to believe in some sense or other the disciplines and knowledge evolved as man made progress and certain aspects of the world became intelligible. Foucault, on the other hand, shows how disciplines and their evolution were tied deeply with politics of time. The great biological image of a progressive maturation of science still underpins a good many historical analysis. It does not seem to me to be pertinent to history. He gives the example of medicine where up until the end of 18th century, here exists a certain type of discourse which changes drastically in a matter of 25 to 30 years. This change in discourse changed the true propositions, bringing into light things that were not known and accounted for earlier. But at the same time, and more importantly, changed the ways of seeing, speaking about, and classifying people as patients of different kinds and suffering from varied diseases. In the birth of a clinic, it shows how medicine and exalted science, unlike the much vilified psychiatry, was deeply enmeshed in social structures. Like medicine, the regulation of madness has also undergone a host of changes. The classification of those who have been considered mad at certain times has undergone changes, and the rules and prescriptions for their treatment have also changed drastically. He shows in madness and civilization. Another example of the intervening of effects of power and knowledge is seen in the case of sexuality. The deployment of sexuality in the 19th century shows how the two poles, anatomopolitics and biopolitics, although they appear 
to target separate entities joined in the form of a concrete arrangement. The campaign against homosexuality and the view for homosexuals in the second half of the 19th century made possible a whole series of interventions, tactical and positive interventions of surveillance, circulation and control. All books on child medicine and pedagogy during the 18th century spoke about children's sex constantly and in every possible way. The effect of this was twofold. It made parents believe that the children's sex was a fundamental aspect of the parental educational responsibility and it made children believe that their relationship with their own body and their own sex was to be a fundamental problem throughout their lives. Sexuality and the regulation of sexuality over centuries, says Foucault, is one of the positive products of power. It is important to note the emphasis on positive products of power here. We have earlier said that power does not exist in isolation, nor is it something that happens by force. Instead, it's, it works via consent, via subjects reproducing the power relations according to previously agreed upon structures. The reason power can be thought of in positive terms is because it produces a certain kind of individual, in this case individuals who can think and view their sexuality in a certain way. What makes power hold good, what makes it accepted is simply the fact that it does not weigh on us as force that says no. It also traverses and produces things, it in, induces pleasure, forms of knowledge, produces discourse. It needs to be considered as a productive network that runs through the whole social body, much more than the negative instance whose function is repression. Biopar. If we go back again to the point where we started talking about politicians and ministers being power hungry or power struggles within organization and parties, we will see that we speak of power in negative. This is because a new economic of power was established beginning in the 17th and 18th century. During this period, the monarchies developed great state apparatuses and accorded itself a juridical function. It framed decrees and laws and presented itself as a referee, punishing those who did not abide by its laws. In this way, for those who were placed under watch power assumed a negative function. This association continues to this day. Despite the fact that the king has been ousted and government has become a matter of the state. The art of government first emerged in the middle of the 16th century. Beginning then, we find a variety of treaties presented not as an advice to the prince as was the case earlier. Instead, these treatises that kept appearing till the end of 18th century proffered views on the art of government. Government as understood in this period included government of oneself, the government of souls and lives by the church and the government of children and the government of the state by the prince. The text therefore deals with questions that span how to govern oneself, how to be governed, how to govern others, who is legitimized to govern and how to become the best governor. Two important historical processes intersected at this point that accounted for the broad scope of treatises on government. One, the structure of feudalism collapsed, leading to the formation and establishment of territorial, administrative and colonial states, giving rise to the question about the government of the population and territory. Two, reformation and counter-reformation gave rise to the question of about how one should govern oneself and lead his or her life on earth in order to achieve eternal salvation. The treatises during this period were concerned with establishing continuity in the upward and downward direction with regards art of the government. In the upward directions, the individual who wished to govern the state first must learn how to govern himself his goods and his families. Only when he learns to do this can he become qualified to govern the state. This ascending line characterized by the pedagogies of the prince. Downward continuity on the other hand ensures that in a well-run state the head of the family will know how to look after himself, his family and his goods. 
This downward line deals with the transference of the principle of good governance of the state to the level of the individual and was affected through what was called police. A text from the 18th century France lists out aspects of life the police is supposed to look after. This text, a compendium of administrative practices used by the civil servants is divided into 11 chapters that deals with religion, morals, health, supplies, roads, highways and buildings, public safety, liberal arts, trade, factories, etc. and factory workers and the poor. Police therefore have a very broad function compared with today and its activities affected every aspect of individual life. The importance accorded to police during this period is evident in the fact that it soon developed as a discipline in the academic meaning of the word. It was taught in various universities in Germany. Foucault's analysis, Foucault analyzes a manual for the students, Elements of Police by Von Justy, to show how the activities of police were theorized. Justy made an important distinction in this book between what he called police and politics. Politics for him was the negative task of the state and focused on the fighting internal and external enemies of just of using the law and the army respectively. At the end of 18th century then the true object of the police was the population. It needed to take care of living things as living things and its power was over life. This power over life is what is called biopower and its vocation is to foster life or disallow it to take point of earth. Foucault draws on the logic of formation which takes hold when power takes species, life as its referent object and the securing of species, life becomes a vocation of a novel and emerging set of discursive formations of power knowledge. The period between the ends of the 16th and 18th century saw a shift in political rationality. This was also a period when the state started intervening more and more in the lives of individuals as the happiness of the individuals was no longer seen as the goal of the state. But one of the prerequisites for the continuance of the state, the importance of life, problems in political power therefore increased substantially and a host of human and social sciences developed that dealt with the problems of individuals inside a population. Statistics was one such area. Government and economy. The art of the government that became an important aspect in the 16th century did not find the material conditions that were necessary for its further development. In fact, Foucault says that a host of processes in the 18th century is what gave the discourse a further push and led to the development of the science of government. Important among these processes were the demographic expansion of the 18th century, increasing abundance of money and the expansion of agricultural production. Economy at this point became refigured and centered on what we understand as economics today. Back in the 16th century, economy was centered on the family and dealt with the correct way to manage individuals, goods and wealth in, within the family. This is something every father or the head of the family was expected to do as regards his wife, children and servants. Management of the family required strict attention to meticulous details and the treatise on art of government from this period were concerned with ways of introducing this attention to meticulous details in management of the state. In this way, economy provided the continuity, the link between management, his goods and the state. The art of government therefore dealt with principally with the introduction of economy in political practice. By the end of the 18th century, family is no longer the object of power. Instead, it is the species, life or population. The problem of population and of dealing with population gives a fillip to the discipline of statistics which had thus far worked within the administrative frame provided by mercantilism. Statistics is gradually used to study various factors and irregularities in population including rates of birth, death diseases, cycles of scarcity, etc. 
phenomena like epidemics, endemic levels of mor mortality, spirals of labor and wealth made intangible through statistics show how they are no longer reducible to the unit of the family. Also becomes possible to see how phenomena tied to the population have become have economic effect. The family dis therefore disappears as the model of the government. In the government of population, the target and instruments is twofold. Interest as a consciousness of each individual who makes up the population and interest in the sense of interest of the population as a whole that may run counter to some individual interest. It is thus the art of government's transition in the 18th century into the science of the government or political science. It gives birth to new tactics and sen centered on biopath that deals with the population, with the population as a political problem, as a problem which is at once scientific and political, as a biological problem and as a powers problem. Foucault has no doubt that biopower was indispensable element in the development of capitalism. Capitalism could develop because the body as machine had been inserted into production and population was subject to adjustment according to economic process. The subject, all the power and the intervening of power knowledge is considered among Foucault's most important contributions. He has clarified that analysis of power is in the goal he has pursued. Instead, he has sought to study the various modes by which human beings are made subjects and the analysis of power is one of the modes of inquiry into this aspect. For instance, the various relations of power in an in individual is part of during childhood provide him or her with security, pleasure, care and guidance. Yet at the same time, they also teach him what is expected of him, the behaviors that are appreciated. These and other relations of power play a role in human beings becoming subjects. Foucault identifies three modes of objectification that transform human beings into subjects. The first mode of inquiry is that, is that try to give themselves the status of science. For instance, the objectifying of the speaking subject in linguistics and philology or the objectification of the laboring subject in economics or the objectification of being alive itself in biology and natural history. The second mode is organized on the, of the subject in what he calls dividing practices. Here the subject is divided inside himself or from others and this processes objectivize him. For example, of these are criminals, good boys, mad, sane, sick, healthy, poor, rich. The third mode is the way in which a human being turns himself or herself into a subject. Sexuality, the way one recognizes one's place in the field of possible sexualities is one example of this. Foucault became involved with the question of power because he saw a gap in the way the subject was conceived. As subjects were, we were, are replacing in relations of production and signification, but at the same time we are also placed in immensely complex relations of power. These relations of power have a large bearing on our placement in relations to production and signification. Yet, while economic history and theory provided for a way to study the relations of production and linguistics and semiotics offered instruments for the study of relations, signification there was no way to study the relations of power. It was therefore necessary to expand the dimensions of definition of power. If one wanted to use this definition, in studying objectivizing of the subject. Foucault clarifies that he is not interested in a theory of power since a theory assumes prior objectification, but at the same time the analysis work cannot proceed without conceptualization. One has one that is always going ongoing subject to constant checking. One of the ways of understanding power relations suggests Foucault is by taking forms of resistance against different forms of power as a starting point. Resistance can function as a chemical catalyst in the study. It can bring to light 
power relations locate the positions tell us about the methods used to quell the resistance and their point of application. In thinking thus about power in 1970s Foucault contested the two accepted conceptions of power at the time. One was the neo Marxian idea that bourgeoisie capitalist owned power is propagated partly through ideologies or pseudo knowledges. The other was the neo Freudian view that power acts like a lawgiver that forbids and represses. Foucault has often been accused of exaggerating the effectiveness of among other things the modes of subjectification. Society's panoptic schemes, constant vigil on the population, biopolitics and bodies within the population, antom of politics to ensure the security of one and all are seen to be too overpowering in Foucault's analysis thus leading to questions whether there is any point at all in struggles against these schemes. Yet the analysis of the very powers that curtail us opens up possibilities of challenging the same power. By analyzing power relations and therefore showing how the contradiction of the present that we take for granted are actually contingent and arbitrary, we can awaken ourselves to an endemic struggle. Thus we have seen how Michel Foucault through the concept of panoptican has shown how we ourselves discipline our bodies and it is through different discourses that have been historically constructed. We commit violence on our own bodies and there is a source of power in knowledge and in knowledge construction through the episteme which ensures that there is conformity in society. Thank you.